Despite matching their overall win total of four wins from a year ago, the Cardinals will enter the 2024 offseason with a deck full of draft picks and $55 million in cap space to spend. And with the renewed culture and identity for the team, it will fall into the hands of Monty Austinfort and Jonathan Gannon to build upon the positives from this season. I'm very excited, Sam. There's a lot of interesting news surrounding the world of ASU sports, and I'm excited to jump right into it. Sun Devil Hockey will be back on the ice this weekend after grinding it out versus Lindenwood last week. However, things do not get any easier as ASU will face an opponent in Alaska Fairbanks who has had the Devils number over the last few seasons. For more on the Sun Devils challenging matchup, we turn it over to Lachlan McTagg. In the world of swimming, ASU's head coach Bob Bowman had just about everything you can get from a career. Championships, Olympians, and records. And to add on to his illustrious resume, it was announced last week that Bowman was named part of the 2023 International Swimming Hall of Fame class. Bowman was recognized for his accomplishments at all levels, most notably at the Olympics. Bowman was the head coach for Team USA in the 2023 World Aquatics Championship, but has also coached the country in five Olympic Games, leading as the head coach in Rio. Joining Bowman is another notable name who has ties to the coach's career, 23-time Olympic gold medalist Michael Phelps. Phelps started working with Bowman when he was 11, and the two were an immediate success. Bowman worked along Phelps and was on the Team USA staff as his primary coach starting in the 2004 Olympics. Dozens of world championships and Olympic medals later, Bowman was hired by Arizona State as the head coach for their swim and dive program. In his nine years in Tempe, the Sun Devils have become a national powerhouse in the pool. ASU won its first Pac-12 title and placed second in the national championship last season. Along with the team's success, Bowman might have his next great swimmer in junior, Leon Marchand. The France native has an awards list that few can rival. He is a five-time national champion, 10-time Pac-12 champion, two-time Pac-12 swimmer of the year, and has not lost an event this year. Bowman and Marchand have led the Devils to a 2-0 record to start the season and take on UNLV at home at 2 o'clock today. Keep up with the team on Twitter at ASU Swim and Dive and check our website for more coverage throughout the year. Thanks, Adam. Now over to Sun Devil Hoops. The ASU men's basketball team is coming off a tough loss to Colorado, losing 82 to 70. The loss now puts the Sun Devils at 5-7 in Pac-12 conference play and 11-12 and overall. We welcome Ernie Jimenez, one of our basketball reporters. Ernie, what do you got for us? Ryan, how did you enjoy your time at the desk today? It was an amazing experience, Sam. I'm so happy I got the opportunity to anchor such an amazing show and more importantly, do it with you by my side. A new journey has officially begun as pitchers and catchers have reported to Salt River Fields today for the first time since that heartbreaking World Series loss to the Rangers back in November. And in looking at who was here, there were plenty of new and familiar faces. We're here in Mesa today for the PPA Pickleball Tournament Tour, which was initially started in Mesa in 2019 and the first tournament taking place in 2020. It is a fun experience for many people of all ages around the world to compete in something that they love. With the sound of pickleballs hitting rackets reverberating throughout the court, players of all ages competed in various rounds of pickleball with some players having multiple years of experience and others just getting started. How long have you both been playing pickleball? Four years for me. And about five for me. About a year. I have been playing for too long, but I just love it. The sport has seen a tremendous growth in involvement and in particular over the last few years. At first, there was no clear direction as to what the sport would morph into, but due to its rapid popularity, pickleball has now been formed into a professional sport that's continuing to garner more attention. So much so, to the point where players can make a career out of it. When I first joined the PPA Tour, it was a lot about uh, what pickleball is, and now we're rapidly moving to, oh great, there's a pro pickleball league, players are actually sustaining themselves and they don't have to have a second job, they're, they're making enough money on the PPA Tour to, to make this a career as a professional athlete, and now they're getting interested in the athlete stories as well. So that all happened within the last year and a half, which has been absolutely insane, but very incredible for our sport. Now the next time a lot of these players will be playing will be in two weeks in Lakeville, Minnesota, as they will look to capitalize off of their play here today. Reporting in Mesa, I'm Ryan Pesesnik, Cronkite Sports. He is going to be the Gorilla Defender, looking for his teammates to get set up. Now on the far side over to Anderson. Anderson down low. Here's a pump fake blocked on the play by the Gorillas, by D.I. Into the hand, here comes Baylor. Baylor over to McClintock. 
McClintock now being guarded, passing over into the corner. Back to McClintock now. McClintock passes over to Baylor. Baylor, back to McClintock. McClintock, here's a little shake and bake. And the pass, great sweltering defense there by the Bengals. Here's a drive inside by Webb. Webb's no good. Here's the rebound by the Bengals out in transition. What a pass that was. And jamming it home is Shantez Anderson for the first points of the game with 7.13 left in the first period. Nice pass there by Moss. Seemed like he was going to lose that one, but gets it off to his teammate for an easy dunk. Gorillas looking to respond into the corner to, Mc to Webb. Webb back to McClintock. McClintock being guarded at the top of the, the key. Now back inside. Here's Webb. Webb. Had his shot blocked, and it's going to go out of bounds off of the Gorillas. It looked like that was off of Jonge Webb. And here come the Bengals looking to push the pace. Damian Rucker with the ball over now to Alabi. Alabi into the corner now, down low into Anderson. Anderson puts a shot up, and we have a whistle on the play, and looks like that's going to go on the Gorillas or excuse me, on the Bengals, so that's going to be their first in the first quarter with 6.37 left. Yeah, nice charge taken there by the Gorillas to just stand their ground and take that one to force change in possession here. Here comes Tyson Baylor bringing the ball up out of backcourt, being guarded by Damian Rucker. And Rucker having, a, or excuse me, Baylor having some trouble trying to get out of it as we have our first time out of the game called by the Inglewood College Prep Gorillas. Here comes McClintock bringing the ball up out of backcourt, being guarded at the top of the key by Anderson. Passes now over in the corner to Bailey. Bailey, here's his drive. Here's his spin. His shot up. No good. Too hard off the glass. Here come the Bengals on transition. Rucker into Sawyer. Sawyer's no good. Here comes Webb now. Webb looking to push the pace on the other end. Here's his shot up. No good. Rebound now it back into the hands of Rucker, but the ball's taken away to Bailey. Bailey, nice little layup there by Webb as he puts the Bengals' first points on the board. And here's another takeaway for the Gorillas. Yeah, the Bengals just going too fast right now. Rucker shouldn't have put that on the ground. Should have calmed down and stopped there. Here's Webb. Webb now on the top over to Bailey. Bailey being guarded by Anderson at the top of the wing. 4.47 left here in period number one as here's Bailey's drive. No good, and he looked like he was trying to find the gorilla player in McClintock in the corner, but he turns it over. Here comes McClintock. McClintock, here's his jumper. No good. Rebound into the hands of the Bengals. Here comes Murray taking his time, bringing the ball up out of backcourt. Murray being guarded by Baylor at the top of the wing. Murray passes over into Moss. He'll tee up a trio and get it. Malik Moss tees up a trio, and it's 10-4. The Bengals up top. Here come the Gorillas. Starling over to Webb. Webb down low to Dehi. Dehi. Ball fake into Webb. Webb trying to put it up the glass. Blocked away by the Bengals. They have numbers. Here comes Moss. Inside, nice razzle-dazzle pass into Damari Sawyer. 12-4 Bengals. Here comes McClintock being guarded by Sawyer. Not too much there as here's the drive on it and nice layup and in by Ryan McClintock. Yeah, tough finish there to go with the right hand, but is able to get it past his defender, and that was overall pretty good defense there by Sawyer, just a better finish. Murray, over to Alabe. Alabe, back to Murray. Murray, here's his shot, no good. Rebound into the hands of the Gorillas. Here comes Baylor, looking to push the pace. Over to McClintock, nice ball fake. Passes over on the far wing as he was looking for Chris Starling that time, but turns it over. I mean, obviously it's going a lot better than it did last night with the eight goals allowed, but tonight, just the one through most of the first. As, as Edfoldson and Felder, each respectively for ASU and Cal State, are going to be at the faceoff. And there's a puck skirmish there controlled by the Titans. Intercepted now by ASU. Rebounded now by Kimball as Kimball Tried to find the man inside, and the goal! 
goal! It's a goal for Brock Green! As that time there, ASU had a perfect execution, found him in the middle, and he put it right through the net. Great play by Green, just shot it. It looks like I couldn't tell if if he got it in and uh, and Envildson might have tipped it in or if it just went right off of Yano's skate. I mean, from this angle, I couldn't see it, but just slips in late, ASU up. Well, that time there, Brock Green with his third goal on the season and fifth point overall. And for Reigns Edelson, that'll be assist number four. He's come up big for the Devils in this two-game set thus far as Green again sends it wide of the net. Rebounded by Kimball over Edelson. And Green again has the puck in control now, looking to reset things up. Finding, trying to find the man open in the middle. And it's taken away by the Titans, poked away now. Here's ASU looking to get re things reset up as Edelson again with some razzle-dazzle trying to find it in, and he scores! Reigns and Edelson with his ninth goal of the year and his third in the past two games. Well, you know, I mean, call it announcer's jinx, call it what you want. I give Yano a compliment and 30 seconds later, Sun Devils up 3-1.